Everybody Needs a Rock by Bird Baylor with pictures by Peter Parnall. This is Jessie's book. Everybody Needs a Rock. I'm sorry for kids who don't have a rock for a friend. I'm sorry for kids who only have tricycles, bicycles, horses, elephants, goldfish, three-room playhouses, fire engines, wind-up dragons, and things like that if they don't have a rock for a friend. That's why I'm giving them my own 10 rules for finding a rock. Not just any rock, I mean a special rock that you find yourself and keep as long as you can, maybe forever. If somebody says, what's so special about that rock? I don't even tell them, I don't. Nobody is supposed to know what's special about another person's rock. All right, here are the rules. Rule number one. If you can, go to a mountain made out of nothing but a hundred million small, shiny, beautiful, roundish rocks. But if you can't, any place will do. Even an alley, even a sandy road. Rule number two. When you are looking at rocks, don't let mothers or fathers or sisters or brothers or even best friends talk to you. You should choose a rock when everything is quiet. Don't let dogs bark at you or bees buzz at you. But if they do, don't worry. The worst thing you can do is go rock hunting when you are worried. Rule number three, bend over, more, even more. You may have to sit on the ground with your head almost touching the earth you have to look a rock right in the eye. Otherwise, don't blame me if you can't find a good one. Rule number four. Don't get a rock that is too big. You'll always be sorry. It won't fit your hand right, and it won't fit in your pocket. A rock as big as an apple is too big. A rock as big as a horse is much too big. Rule number five. Don't choose a rock that is too small. It will only be easy to lose, or a mouse might eat it, thinking that it is a seed. Believe me, that happened to a boy in the state of Arizona. The size must be perfect. Rule number six. It has to feel easy in your hand when you close your fingers around it. It has to feel jumpy in your pocket when you run. Some people touch a rock a thousand times a day. These aren't many things that, there aren't many things that feel as good as a rock if the rock is perfect. Rule number seven. Look for the perfect color. That could be a sort of pinkish gray with bits of silvery shine in it. Some rocks that look brown are really other colors, but you only see them when you squint and when the sun is right. Another way to see colors is to dip your rock in a clear mountain stream if one is passing by. Rule number eight, the shape of the rock is up to you. There is a girl in Alaska who only likes flat rocks. Don't ask me why, I like them lumpy. The thing to remember about shapes is this, any rock looks good with a hundred other rocks around it on a hill, but if your rock is going to be special, it should look good by itself in the bathtub. Rule number nine, always sniff a rock. Rocks have their own smells. Some kids can tell by sniffing whether a rock came from the middle of the earth or from an ocean or from a mountain where wind and sun touched it every day for a million years. You'll find out that grown-ups can't tell these things. Too bad for them. They just can't smell as well as kids can. Rule number 10. Don't ask anybody to help you choose. I've seen a lizard pick one rock out of a desert full of rocks and go sit there alone. I've seen a snail pass up 20 rocks and spend all day getting to the one it wanted. You have to make up your own mind. You'll know. All right, that's 10 rules. If you think of any more, write them down yourself. I'm going out to play a game that takes me that takes just me and one rock to play. I happen to have a rock here in my hand. That was Everybody Needs a Rock 
by Bird Baylor and Peter Parnall. And this is EDU Kids Space. Subscribe for more books, stories, and lessons, and if there's something in particular you'd like to learn about, leave us a message in the comments.